Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. I've got a new book. I made this book. Uh, one of the subscribers, I'm not going to say the name because I don't know if anybody can get in trouble for this. I honest to God don't. Sent me the PDF of a book, a very expensive book. If you look on Amazon or eBay or anywhere, the cheapest one of these physical books that I have found was around $500. I seen one upwards of $1,300. So it really intrigued me. I'm gonna give you a close up look at the cover. Um, this is Herbs For You by Dr. A.B. Howard. So the PDF was sent to me and there's actually two books. Uh, I haven't dug into the second book because there's a lot of the information in the second book that is in the first book. So what I'm going to do, instead of printing off the whole second book, because I printed this 271 pages, and let me tell y'all, me and that printer had a round. <laughs> it's a, I've got a HP LaserJet 2025, CP 2025. It's a commercial style printer. We use it to print all of our business stuff off. Well, we've not used it in a long time because it started acting up. I bought ink for it. It has four cartridges of color jet of color ink and I think it was like $115 for the ink. So just to give you an idea of what I got invested in this book myself. So I went, I bought a binder, I bought all these leaflets to put in there, these page protectors is what they're called, and I started printing it, and I got to page 90-something, and the printer started acting all kind of crazy. I'm talking about I fought, fought, fought with it, and come to find out there is a little relay inside that printer. I watched YouTubes, read a bunch of forums. Thank the world for YouTube, you know. And you fold up a piece of paper and stick it into that contact down there but in that relay because it keeps sticking is what it's doing. There's a foam adhesive in there. A foam. There's an adhesive-backed piece of foam in there. Let me get it right. And what it does, it deteriorates over time, and you're left with a sticky substance that's stuck to the metal back there, and the contact, when it comes back, it closes like this. Well, it sticks, and it, it just keeps cycling. So I had the recommendations on YouTube, fold up a small piece of paper and stick it down in there, and voila, it fixes your problem. So it, and it did. So last night, I finished printing all of this off, and y'all, looking through this book, uh... It's going to be a wonderful book, but it is missing some plants, which is the way of every book. I love medicinal plants. Uh, to sit here and say that, oh, I know all these medicinal plants, no, not, not even close. Uh, I enjoy the study of them. I enjoy going out there and finding plants and saying, this has a use. This, this is here for a purpose. That is what intrigues me, that... That God put this plant here, and he put uh, powers within it for me to figure out and to help me. So that, that, and that is the way I view it. Um, so there is some plants that are missing, and that's the way of every book. It don't matter what book you buy, it is not going to have every plant in it. So in the future, what I'm fixing to do as well, since I've got this far along with this book, I'm not going to add anything to this one. It's going to be a standalone book as it is written. Uh, it has a lot of, of, and it. if you notice at the top, it's got how to navigate. That was on the PDF. That is not part of the book. It printed it on every page. Not a problem for me, but just know it's there. It covers a lot of plants. Uh, the first section of the book, it goes through the table of contents, historical uses of the plant, uh, vitamins and minerals, teas. I mean, it gets out where to start. And then it goes into the plant. So you've got about 75 pages of using the medicine. Doctrine uh, goes over... Um, problems. In other words, like 
is I'm on page 22, brain and nerves. You got bowels, uh, calcium source, cancer disorders and tumors. I mean, it goes down there. There's chlorophyll, uh, cataract type problems, circulation, colds, coughs, and flu. And it cramping. I mean, it just, there's diabetes problems, digestion and stomach, and I'm skipping over stuff. So ears and throat. I mean, it just skips over all the way and over here, like there's one that says infants, infections. So it goes through a list of, of problems. Uh, and then I think it actually gets into to children's dosages, teas, capsules, like making some medicine, drugs and herbs, where to start. Uh, it has some tonics in it. And then you go into the plants, and it starts with uh, alfalfa. I mean, it has a lot of plants in there. The one thing, though, that baffled me, like right here on this, this next first of a few plants, is aloe, which is aloe vera. Properties and uses, arthritis, bloating, removes poisons, and bowel poisons. Says nothing about burns. I have always known of this plant, my go-to burn plant. If I get burnt, where's the aloe vera? Sunburns, aloe vera. And it didn't even mention that. And I so what I'm pointing out is any book you buy is don't have everything in it. That's why I have a bookshelf over here full of books. As you start studying medicinal plants, I mean, and the reason is, is there's no possible way to fit everything in one book. So that being said, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start building my own book. It's going to take some time. Uh, I'm going to pull information off the internet and I'm going to print it off. Uh, I may take information out of my books and, and whatever, but I'm going to try to print it my own Materia Medica, put it in a binder like this with page protectors and all that. And I'm going to pull pages from different books this one thing I do like, it has a lot of color photos, will help with identification. And I realize with these glossy pages, it's going to not be great for showing you. Uh, it's got Arnica, Angelica, Barberry. I mean, it, it's got all your basic plants, basil. It even covers bee pollen. Um, so, and everything has a, has a picture or most everything. Blue vervain, hyssop, I mean, you got blue cohosh. So it covers a wide variety of plants. I don't know exactly how many plants is in there. There's mugwort, mullen. I'm just flipping through here and naming all some. Marshmallow, male fern, lemongrass. I mean, it is... So I really have not sat down and dug into it. Um, I'm sure there's a lot missing. I did see wild lettuce in it. I did not see goldenrod. Uh, I did not see ursnia. Uh, so I have not looked in the S's to see if goldenrod is under solid dago. I'm right there now. It's skunk cabbage. I don't... It's not going to be in here. There's Solomon seal, slippery elm, south thistle, spikenard. Uh, spring violet, spirulina, no goldenrod, stone root, stellingula, squall vine. Oh, uh, so it, you know, you can't really have one book and it do everything you need to do in the world of medicinal plants because there's so many of them. And the, and the big thing is, is as you get into different areas, like if you're watching my videos, I'm down here in central Mississippi. I'm going to have a whole bunch of plants and times of year for plants that's not going to be relative to the northeast or the midwest or, you know, the far west. If you're up in Oregon and Washington and, and all up around that area, my stuff's not going to be relevant, you know, to what you're doing, especially if you're in another country watching uh, yes, a lot of these plants are the same, um, and there's still there's still several books out there that I want. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to pull as much information as I can from the internet, some some websites, and get one book that has all the plants that I use regularly. Uh, Ursna is one that I have not studied. 
Uh, I have read about it. I know what it does. I have never used it, and I have never found it. Well, I, I mean, I, I knew it was around here. I've just never focused on it more than likely. I've got it growing right here in my yard, and I showed it on a on a video, a clip in a video, several videos back, and somebody commented about it, um, and I think they were they was under the impression that I didn't know anything about it. Uh, it's just that the only plants I do is ones I find that I'm fixing to use that I, I know what I'm talking about. I don't like to just pick a plant and then read a page out of a book about it without actually have used it or tested it or, or messed with it. Most of the plants I have covered, I have eaten, used, made medicine, whatever. Um, so when you get to talking about making medicine, number one, I don't use a lot of medicine. I do like to study the plants. So I'm going to have to start studying and working and reading about plants that I don't use on a regular basis. Just for the fact of, of those people with problems that I don't have. I'm, I'm fairly healthy, thank God. Um, but we still need to know and use and share this knowledge because we, I want to help people. And the reason I like medicinal plants is it allows me to help people that don't cost you anything. Uh, I'm not trying to sell you medicine or sell you, you know, plant seeds and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not the greatest at growing plants from seeds. Uh, I, I just, I can do it occasionally. Some seeds I do all right with, and it's because that's not my number one thing. I got so many irons in the fire, I forget about them, let them die. Uh, but, you know, I'm not trying to peddle seeds or anything. I want to help people get better. So as we're going into spring, we're going to get into medicinal plants. Well, I've been holding off on the earth now, waiting to get this book printed out, thinking I was going to use it. Well, Ursna is not in this book. <laughs> so that being said, that's why I'm going to have to use, you know, several different books. But I am a mite proud of this book. So thank you to the guy that sent me this. Uh, I really appreciate it. It is going in my collection of books. I have it printed off 271 pages. And uh, we will be using it most definitely because I have not gotten to sit down and really dig into the information that is in it. Uh, one thing I like about these pages and these page protectors, I can take this out in the field with me, you know, on the buggy, whatever, and not worry about it if it starts mist and rain. I have been out there when it starts mist and rain or something and your books start getting... So these pages will be good in there. The only problem is if it's setting upright and it rains in the top of it, it's going to catch all the water. So, you know, you have to stick it in your bag bottom upwards. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my medicinal plant book. And uh, we're going to go out. I'm going to walk around and I'm going to show you a couple of different things that is coming up. And just briefly talk over a few odd and end little plants. Somebody had asked the other day about goldenrod tea and its uses. And my number one way of making medicine, because I'm in a pottery shop, and y'all, this coffee pot looks like it probably ain't been washed in six months. It gets washed three or four times a week at least. But every time I handle it and pour coffee, I am got clay all over my hands. And I don't, I, even if I wash my hands, it still gets on there. I have not figured out how to stay perfectly clean out here. But as you'll see in here, there is a tea ball. I put my medicinal plants. And goldenrod, I don't necessarily drink as a medicine. I like the flavor of it. It keeps me from drinking a lot of coffee. Um, but now this one right now actually has passion plant in it, which is maypop, passion fruit. Um, I'm going to lay this right in there for a second. Th this is kind of how I do my plants, and they're sitting up on the shelf. I didn't go wash everything right before I decided to make this video, so... And they're getting dusty in there because it's dry. This, these are just jars. I dry my plant out there on different ways of drying it. I've got a lot of videos on stuff, and this is goldenrod. I put solidago canadensis on it. Uh, and you, I have several different varieties of goldenrod growing here. But now I fill my coffee pot up with water, the back of it. I set this in there and hang that tea ball in there and turn the coffee pot on. That is the quickest, easiest way because 
a lot of days it's warm and I'm not always running a fire here. If I am, I do have a pot. It's actually up there on my back kitchen that I can um, build a fire and cook over the fire and do my teas up there. So let's walk around and look. I'm going to put this book. I'm going to show you some of my other books right quick, what it looks like over there. So y'all, this is what it looks like over here in my little corner. And it, I cannot keep it clean because of pouring these molds. I'm constantly pouring molds. Um, and you see how dusty everything gets. And this is a book totally off topic, but it is laying right there in all of my stuff, my books. Um, this right here is all medicinal plants, every bit of it. I think there's one garden book down there. Um, from my area, this is probably my number one go-to book. As far as a field book, this is South Southeast Medicinal Plants. You can get this for whatever area you're in. So, um... And I, I put post-it notes, stick them to the pages, whatever I'm studying. I was doing sumac, apparently. Uh, stone root. Uh, one of the ones that I am experimenting with. Sarsaparilla, Smilax, Bonanox. Um, this plant here, basically the Greenbrier vine, uh, using the root has a lot of uses. I have talked about it briefly in different videos. Uh, it grows rampantly everywhere here, but we're starting to get some plants popping up and I'm gonna walk around here just in a second and talk about just a few plants. But I just wanted you to see I, how many books and every one of them there's plants and some of them that's not in the other ones. Uh, this old book right here has a lot of information, but it's kind of hard to digest. There's no color photos, but it's an old book, has some old information in it. Um, one of the things I was pleased about this book is you look at the cover. One of my favorite plants is on the cover that is not widely used anymore, and that is cardinal flower, Lobelia cardinalis. And uh, it, it, this book briefly went over some things about it that I did not know, information that was not in the other book. So that's why more books is always power. Um, and you got to read about them. There's even Rodale's Herbs. There's a lot of, you know, these are good old books. They talk a lot about gardening and growing, healing with herbs, herbal botany, growing herbs. So these, it depends on what you're wanting to do. If you want to make medicine, the Herbal Medicine Maker's Handbook tells you a lot about making medicine. Lost Book of Herbal Remedies, exceptional book. This is a very good book. I would encourage you to, to buy it. Uh, and it probably, I think I've just seen it. I about know it has Ursnia. No, that's Spanish moss. I bet you Ursnia is in it. There's Ursnia. We're going to go look at that. Let me read about it. Since I am fixing to go look at Ursnia, Let's see what this is. Edible use is considered edible when leached a few times, but is not very palatable. It can cause great stomach upset, and I don't eat it. This is, however, one of my favorite go-to medicinal plants. Antibiotic use. Uh, medicinal use. It's a powerful antibiotic, antifungal, antimicrobial, and antiviral. It always carry ursina and blue elderberry tinctures whenever I travel on airplanes because I'm around people who may be ill. As they both prevent and cure illness, I often put ursina in a spray bottle for this use. I find the spray of ursina tincture in the back of the throat helps prevent illness from taking hold. There's also a handy delivery mechanism to spray on a wound or a skin condition. Ursina extracts well in Ursnia extracts well in oil and double extracted tincture in alcohol and water. Antibiotic, antiviral, 
respiratory system, skin problems, wounds and infections, yeast infections, athlete's foot, jock itch, ringworm, dandruff, and other fungal infections. Stops bleeding. Um, eye wash. So there's, there's a lot of things that it'll do. That's not an in, this is not an in-depth study on earth now. We will do one. I am going to take you there. We're going to look at it. To the person that, that commented on my video that where I showed this, they said, oh, I never find it. I've looked on dead trees and I don't find it. This is not a dead tree. This is a very much alive peach tree. And it is growing all up and down the stalk of it. Uh, now there has been some dead on it at times. Um, not sure if it growing on here is a good thing. There's a limb right up here, dead center of it that is dead. See that? But where it is growing is very much alive because there's life all above this. I mean, there's a limb up here coming out that is very much alive. This limb up here is very much alive. So I'm going to let you get a better look at this. And see, this is it right here. This is growing all up and down this tree. So all these purple flowers right here, this is all hen bit. And you see how it's shaped? Okay, now look further down in here. I'm trying to get it in focus. This one is purple dead nettle. So let me get them side by side. You see the difference? The one on your left is hen bit. The one on your right is purple dead nettle. Both very edible and actually pretty good. They do have some medicinal properties. So I walk around right here in my, basically my backyard and look at plants. I find all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of the clovers growing. Now this is not red top clover right here, but even plants that I plant, like right back here, I know in this wood line, I have a lot of sassafras growing. I leave it there on purpose. I, grow, I let a lot of wild stuff grow up and stay like this because, I mean, I'm itching to mow my grass. It is a little too wet for that. But I do not want to cut down every medicinal plant. A lot of times I leave little patches of stuff somewhere just for the sake of having something if I need it or to be able to film it a lot of times more or less. Um, but another thing is, is while you're out learning plants, and I preach this, use several different tools uh, the internet is a great thing it really is i use my phone app i use picture this it seems to work the best for me i've used iNaturalist. it was seemed to be more inaccurate than the others picture this seems to work the best for me uh, i use it then i'll get a book and i'll find what is another thing that i'll do is if i'm questioning the identity of a plant if i'm not absolutely sure I take a picture of that plant, several different angles. Mushrooms, you need a top and a bottom picture on. But mostly plants I fool with. I, I, I'm a little leery of mushrooms because there's a lot of lookalikes on some of them. Some of them I'm absolutely sure on. But I'll take a picture and then I'll go to Google and I'll type that in what I think it is, whatever the closest guess is. And I'll click on images where I get a whole feed of nothing but pictures of it. And if my plant looks like 75% of these pictures, then I I'm, I'm feel like I'm on the right track. If it just looks like one or two of the pictures, I'm like, I'm not sure about this. You know, I, I'm going to go a different route. The information I get, y'all, the internet is great, but there's a lot of misinformation on the internet. And it's on every topic. Medicinal plants is no exception. Anybody that can type on the internet and start a blog can put information out there and make a page look like it is a professional accurate page you have to be careful with what information you get when you google something okay make sure you're getting information on the internet from a reliable source these that's why i favor the books the books somebody has put more effort and together an accurate information and putting it together into a book, they have done a lot more studying than somebody just picking away on a keyboard at, the, at a computer. I don't, I mean, there's just too many people these days that I just don't trust. 
Is that saying every book is right? No, the books could have some wrong things in them too. I mean, things change over time. There's a lot of information been updated. Uh, and there's a lot of accurate information on the internet. There's a lot of people putting good information out there. Just mind where you're getting it and who the source is. I know with the gardening, there's a lot of people talk about all plants leaching up stuff and harmful. The fact that a plant can leach a little of something out of the ground, a plant is not going to leach up anything that's going to hurt you out of the ground because it will kill that plant if it's, if it's harmful at that level. Use some common sense, you know, with what you're doing. Um, but use the internet, use books. Facebook groups are awesome when you're hunting plants because you know what's blooming in your time there. Get in a foraging group. We have a great one here in Mississippi. Mississippi Foraging is a wonderful, awesome group. Uh, get in there and you'll see people taking pictures of what is growing and blooming and, and harvest at that point in time. Like mushrooms, when they pop out, they'll take over one of those pages, especially, you know, lion's mane, oysters, chicken of the woods, uh, chanterelles. And we don't really have morals here, morels, however you say that. So I, I've not been fortunate enough to find one. Um, but, you know, I enjoy plants. It is like a treasure hunt for me to come out here and walk around and look and see what is coming up. So one of the things I wanted to point out, even though it ain't the perfect time of year right now, oh, my knee. I need to get some pain medicine, don't I? Right here, I've got goldenrod. One of the ways I actually know for a fact this is goldenrod without... Well, I mean, beside the fact that I just know it by, by looking at it, I have fooled with it so much, is I have the old goldenrod stalk still right here. Old dried goldenrod. Well, look, coming right out from under it. It grows from the root. So that is one of the ways I learn a lot. It helps me identify plants. I go down here to my medicinal garden, and I guarantee you, you see there's a lot of field garlic and um, wild onion growing right here. And I can walk right through my garden right here, and I've got even these these garden plants can be medicinal. Lettuce has wild lettuce properties that's just a lot milder in your garden lettuce. So you can see my garden growing up right here. A lot of purple dead nettle. I mean, y'all, look at this stuff. I mean, it is thick right down in there. Very edible. So this is my medicinal garden. And you can see, as you look down on the ground in here, you're starting to see new plants, especially the curly dock is coming out. Curly dock, this is a wonderful time for it. That is curly dock right there. And I realize I'm all in shadows all on everything. Small in times, I got some larger plants of it. The the blackberry tea you can make tea out of those leaves i figured there was wild lettuce coming up this is green briar root i'm actually wanting to get it out of here so i need to actually pull it up and y'all the sun's so bright right now i can't see what's on this screen i was looking to see if any of the wild lettuce yes right here there's wild lettuce coming up see it it's already started sprouting here. It excites me. I enjoy walking around out here at times and seeing what all I can find, what's coming up. Uh, I, one of the things that I struggle with, and that is mullen. I have grown mullen here as a transplant a time or two. I have yet to get a seed to plant. Um, ground a little bit cool to be out here walking around barefooted <laughs> so i've got my moccasins on today i like to get barefooted and walk around and look for plants is one of my favorite things to do i know i love to fish but y'all i probably love medicinal plants about as much and i always say hey i'm not gonna get big in the garden and when it starts to get warm and i get my toes in that dirt out there y'all probably everything will change y'all know what i'm talking about when you start putting seeds in the ground there's something that just comes over you that you can't stop. Well, it's the same way with me with medicinal plants. I enjoy studying them and figuring out what is edible out here. So as far as coming out here and just picking and eating and making you a salad, you got wild onion, field garlic, 
uh, a lot of mouse-eared chickweed, and there's actually several different varieties of chickweed right here. Uh, purple dead nettle, hen bit, um, and the wild lettuce is edible, and probably at this stage, I would say it's probably more palatable while it's real young. It ain't so bitter. As it gets older, it gets way more bitter and more potent as far as medicine. Um, dandelion, we've got a lot of dandelion here. Now, I showed a little clip of it in the beginning. It's more up in my front yard. Dandelion likes harder packed soil. Right now, we're down in the lower part of my backyard, and it's a lot wetter down here right now. There's a lot of evening primrose coming up right down in there. Look at all that goldenrod, y'all. Loads of goldenrod. I love to see it coming up. The one thing I am somewhat looking for is my Lobelia cardinalis. I have yet to get it to grow down here. That may be one right there, though. We will keep an eye on that to see it and possibly that's gonna be goldenrod over there and this may be goldenrod here it's at this young age it's hard to tell i had planted it in here a time or two A wild lettuce coming up goldenrod thick so one of the other things i get a lot of people asking me about my my blackberries that i planted in my gardening videos yeah, they're coming back doing good. We're going to probably be loaded. They only produce fruit on their second year of growth. Uh, that's like these, you see. These right here will have uh, blackberries on all of this that's growing right here right now, which I really don't want it in here because I have got a uh, uh, fig bush over in here that I think may be dead. Looks like it. I don't know. I don't. That stuff's not good to eat. I am propagating some new ones, so we'll do another video on all that. Thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. Remember the best way to do things the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one.